Today I'm going to teach you how to troubleshoot and fix a laptop which is turning on because you got some LED lights and you got fan spinning but there is nothing coming on the display. Coming up, all the intro. Hey Nim Tags and welcome, this is Ash from my Tech helping you go from newbie to techie. So I've done a video similar to this before. I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. It's called laptop, no display, troubleshoot, something like this, possible fixes. Now, uh, funnily, it was also a Lenovo laptop. This one is a Z570 idea pad. I'm going to put the description below. And uh, we have similar problems. So you got LED lights, you got the fan spinning, you got power button uh, light. On, but nothing comes on the display. So I'm going to teach you how to troubleshoot this so you can identify which part of the laptop isn't working so you can decide whether to repair or to replace. A disclaimer here, this in the end is not going to be a repair video, it's going to be a replacement part video. So bear that in mind and I'll explain the reasons why at the end of the video. Okay, so first thing that you'd want to do, now I'm going to disconnect this. I, uh, I'm going to redo this video and like I said, in a better audio and order. Now, I'm gonna be a bit more thorough this time. These, there's some precautions I will take which you may not need to take. So the first thing I would want to test, because why not, I've got it already. I'm gonna use a digital multimeter and test for the charger. Now, there is no need to do this if the laptop is turning on, but I just wanna be thorough. So I'm gonna test for DC power coming in. This charger has got 20 volt of DC supposedly coming in. So we're going to hopefully test and get about 20 volt of reading in there. And we're getting 20.50, so that's fine. I know the charge is fine. Now, why does it matter? I mean, in most cases, it wouldn't matter. But just in case the charger was delivering the wrong voltage, it could potentially damage something inside. So just want to make sure. If you don't have a multimeter, I do suggest you get one. I'm also putting a link above in a video which I did of a more detail how to test for the DC voltage in a laptop charger. Okay, so now that's out of the way, what I would advise, which I didn't in the last video at first, is before you attempt to troubleshoot this or to repair or to send it anyway, you should get your hard disk out and it's located at the back. Now, with this model, this cover, was at the back this way and it was screwed in by one two three four five and six screws you need a small flip screwdriver very easy to do so what you should do i would take it out as you can see but what you should do always before working on a laptop make sure you switch it off unplug it remove the battery okay before you attempt to work on anything and i would advise to press and hold the power button for at least 30 seconds to discharge any potential static electricity. And if you've done that, I've done that before. Um, if you are going to be thorough, now, the hard drive, try to make sure you don't you know, touch anything in there. The hard drive is screwed in by one screw here, and it's plugged into this SATA connector. So all you need to do is undo the hard drive. Now, this is for you to bear in mind. You should have backed up your data by now. And if you haven't, shame on you. But if you want to consider retrieving your data at this point, this is the time to do it. So just grab it, pull down, and it comes off. And that's the hard disk. Now, I have also checked this hard disk. It's still working. Don't worry about the test because we don't need the hard disk to test for the laptop if it's working or not. Now, the way to recover data, there's many, many ways. There are professionals who do this. You have to pay a pretty penny. One easy way that I do, I usually take the hard disk and plug it into any other computer or another laptop. And most of the time, it will allow me to boot up. Okay, I've done a video about this. You can check it out above in the link and in the description below. If that doesn't work, there's always uh, ways to access data on this using Linux or using other recovery software. But we'll have a, an upcoming video on this, hopefully in more detail. So make sure you do this, very important. Now at this stage, data on there, if it's important, can't be recovered. And if you damage anything on the laptop while troubleshooting or repair, I mean, you can cause irreversible damage. So best to do that. Okay, so these symptoms here, I mean, we know we've got power and we've got LED 
flashing and we've got fans spinning but we've got nothing coming on the display so it could be the screen it could be something else now if your laptop had no power whatsoever like I mentioned you check the charger first and there's also a need to check whether power is coming onto the motherboard itself which again I've done a video check that link and and above whether there's power coming to the motherboard we know power coming to the motherboard at this stage okay right so the first thing you'd want to do now is you're going to want to check whether it's your screen or not. If everything else is working fine and your screen is damaged, I mean, it can happen, you should be able to get yourself a VJ cable or HDMI cable. Now this one's got both. It's got VGA and HDMI. I'm gonna use VGA and you need to plug it in. So what you're gonna to want to do is to bypass the laptop screen and uh, you're going to want to connect it to an external monitor to see whether it's working, okay? Two things to remember, make sure the cable is working and the external monitor you're plugging in into is actually also working. You'd be surprised some people assume they've got a correct working monitor cable and monitor and they test and they see nothing on, they assume that the laptop is not working, whereas it was their monitor or cable that wasn't working, okay? So we got the battery off, turn it back on, and you've plugged it in, I'm going to show you, I've got a monitor here and I'm going to change the input to D sub. Okay, and if the laptop is working and LED lights is on, if the motherboard was working, everything is working, but the screen was damaged, you, you should see something coming up on the um, screen here. But as you can see, there's no display. Okay, so what that means, is we've got a laptop that potentially has an inner component working and the screen is probably fine, okay? Right, off with this test, we don't need to do that. We can unplug the VGA cable. I'm gonna unplug the mains power. Now, the next thing you don't wanna do is you're gonna to want to test whether you've got some sort of faint light on the screen itself. So get yourself a torch, okay? I'm gonna use my phone, should be fine. And you need to be, bring it very close to the center, right? And turn it back on. Now, what you're gonna look out for is a faint logo or BIOS or anything on the screen, right? So if it was your screen um, that was a bit dodgy, but you could see a very faint logo or BIOS on the screen while you turn it on, that would mean it could be your cathode or your inverter or the backlight, okay? Now, if it's on an older LCD monitor, then you could change the cathode or the backlight um, kind of relatively easily, I would say, medium skills, okay? For the newer LED, if it's, you know, a backlight issue, the advice is to change the whole screen, which might cost you a lot cheaper anyway, just to get a new screen. That's only if you see a faint logo or a BIOS setup while you bring the flash uh, light onto the screen. In this case, we haven't seen anything, okay? So, now what we're gonna do at this stage, because I've already done a hard reset, um, you could do this at this stage. By the way, all these stages you could do in various order. This is the order I'm doing it, okay? So unplug it off, press and hold the power button for at least 30 seconds. What this does essentially, it is discharge, what this does essentially, it discharges any residual static electricity and it does what's called a hard reset. In many cases, I've actually done this and it did resume, you know, a computer working in perfect order. I mean, that's not always the case, but it's something to consider what else you got to lose, okay? Now that's done, you can plug it back, okay? and turn it on again and I've done this before I know it still doesn't work but at this stage if it works you're good to go you know perfect right now if that didn't work now you need to access the RAM do bear in mind this is a Lenovo IdeaPad Z550 your model may differ okay now what happens here we have some couple of RAM sticks in these slots here okay and uh, it's possible that the RAM one or both of these RAM sticks could be causing the failure. It's also possible that the RAM slot on the motherboard could be causing failure. 
So what to do with laptop switched off and hard reset done? You want to remove the RAM slots, oops, sorry, the RAM sticks. And uh, right, now this one was close to the motherboard. What to do now is a few things. First, I would want you to swap the RAM uh, positioning. So take the other one, insert them one at a time. So grab the other one and place it back into the RAM slot. Okay, once you do that, go back and now leave the second one empty. Go back and turn the computer again. Okay, I've done this before, it doesn't work. So I know that. The second thing you need to do is then remove that and uh, place the other RAM stick, which was close to the motherboard, to the second slot. Okay, and repeat, sorry, repeat the same process. Now, if that fails, and probably will fail if your motherboard is damaged, what you may want to do is consider getting yourself a second compatible RAM stick from a different uh, system, from a different motherboard that you know works for sure. And I know these work, it comes from a Sony Vio laptop, which I've been testing, which is meant for an upgrade. You can watch the video up there. So you should then insert the RAM sticks and you could do one at a time or both. I've done this before again and that didn't work but you should always make sure that you're checking with RAM which is actually working okay make sure you do that okay now if all of that has failed and in our case it definitely has in that case what the prognosis is you've got one of three possible scenario you've got the GPU or the graphics chip on the motherboard itself which is dead okay and if that's the case it's hard to diagnose but that would mean you could either do what's called reflowing or reballing, which some people do. I don't recommend it professionally. Some professionals do not like it. It essentially means you kind of wing it and try to uh, use a, a hot air gun and reflow the balls under the chip to make sure that it goes back and solders back on or glues back onto the motherboard, which is a really terrible thing to do. If it works, it's a temporary fix. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work, but a professional person would not recommend this also although some YouTubers have done this online. Now, the other thing that could be wrong with it, it could be the Northbridge chip on the motherboard itself, or it could be something else on the motherboard. But at this point, I'm pretty confident 99% of my prognosis is the motherboard should be replaced or repaired. And I'm gonna go for replacement, and I'll give the reasons why. A repair cost, I've got a cost from someone, is gonna cost at least 150 pounds to 175 pounds. Whereas I've bought a replacement motherboard used on eBay, link below, and you make sure the compatibility is the same, and we're gonna just replace that. Now, obviously, if you're attempting it, you will, you will forego the cost of labor. If you can send it to someone, they're gonna charge you a lot of money. You need to weigh in whether it's worth for you or not. So I'm gonna leave the actual technical disassembly of this laptop in a different video, and we're gonna also do a motherboard swap, but I'll see you back in a few minutes, hopefully, if I've managed to uh, successfully replace this motherboard and whether it's working or not. Okay guys, so I've just finished swapping the motherboards. So we have now in there the supposedly good working order motherboard, but it's a used one. So just plug in the charger, we're gonna turn back on. I've also connected the hard disk for now before I screw everything back together. I've got some LED lights. And da da, we got something on the screen. So this was the first part of the repair. I'm hoping, you know, it's gonna let us uh, boot into something later. I mean, right now, it's not completing the BIOS, so it's kind of hanging, but that might be, you know, some minor issue which we're gonna try and troubleshoot. But at least we know that there was a problem on the motherboard previously, or it was, you know, the graphics chip, or it was the Northbridge, whatever it was. Right, it's looking for information. Um, I'm gonna troubleshoot this, but at least we've got something on the screen, okay? Okay, we've got some sort of uh, Windows logo, and, uh, it wasn't booting up properly. I removed one of the RAM sticks from the RAM slot and it, now he's doing that. I'm guessing there might be a problem with also the RAM or one of the RAM slots. So we're gonna continue some further tests. Okay guys, it's now been over three weeks since I've replaced this motherboard and there is good and bad news. So the good news is that we did in fact confirm the previous motherboard was faulty. Maybe the graphics chip or Northbridge chip or something else on the motherboard. 
Now here's the bad news. Since then, I have not been able to successfully boot up into Windows or even into a Linux USB installation disk, which I normally use to diagnose some hardware issues. The laptop would sometimes turn on without display and other times with display, but would hang at various stages of booting up once it did reach a Windows logo, but again got stuck. I tested every single component independently, the RAM, USB installation disk, different hard drive, SSD, another Linux USB disk, reseated the processor, reapplied new thermal paste, amongst other things, and many, many, many hours later, it was still not booting up. I did contact the seller who kept asking me to check for things that I've just mentioned above, insisting that their motherboard was definitely working. To be fair, two things I did not do. One, I did not test the processor independently since I didn't have another compatible motherboard to test with. And second, I did not breadboard this used motherboard because it was not worth the trouble. After a few email exchanges with the seller, they were happy for me to return for a full refund, which I just received today. So does that mean that we should look for another used motherboard for another replacement? No, this is where I draw the line. And my client, who initially wanted to get another motherboard, has finally come to terms that it's probably time for another laptop. Before you think this was a complete failed replacement, hear me out. I have successfully replaced 40 motherboards before with similar issues, as I mentioned at the beginning, like on this other Lenovo laptop. This is my recommended fix, i.e. a replacement. Sure, you can attempt to reflow the graphics chip, that's your choice, or you can find a motherboard diagnostic expert. I am not one, but the repair cost would be really high, most probably not worth it, unless you've got a very high-end laptop or you have sentimental attachment to this device. A replacement is going to be the cheapest option, even though for these kind of laptops you will not find yourself a new motherboard. The cheapest option, especially if you forego the cost of paying someone to get it replaced, will be finding a working used motherboard, but it comes with all the gambles of used items. As a last advice, I also have a troubleshoot series for a desktop computer and both laptops and desktop computers work in the exact same way except the components are of different size and shape. If you want to know what can possibly cause any computer to have these issues, then go and watch that series and apply the same principle to laptop troubleshooting. I'm hoping to do a separate laptop troubleshooting series in the future. All in all, I maintained what I said in this rather controversial video entitled Never Buy a Laptop, which is receiving far more attention than I could possibly have thought and which definitely requires a follow-up due to the amount of comments and questions, not to mention the liked to dislike ratio. And if you have any nasty comments about how basic this troubleshoot is and my lack of uh, engineering expertise to diagnose a motherboard, know that I have never made it a secret as to my limitations. So unless you would be willing to offer practical diagnostic help in form of an actual collaboration video, then please keep your composure. Then again, this is YouTube, so go ahead and do your thing down below. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. We at the end of today's video. Like, comment and share this vid. Also consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet, this really helps us with the channel. This video was not sponsored, but please consider using my affiliate link if you want to buy anything from places like Amazon, it really helps the channel. As always, it was a pleasure, this was Ash from Ilmai Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.